Lee working a five, and I'm gonna do a little something different for my channel. I'm gonna do an unboxing of Arrow's recent release, which just was probably released this week. I pre-ordered it, and then I finally got it in the mail Monday, I believe. And this is Remo Williams: The Adventure Begins. Uh, this is region B locked, so you would definitely need a region free player. Um, I've dabbled here and there with uh, different regions, especially DVDs, martial art wise, but uh, recently I tried uh, to get a few of these, but uh, this is the first Arrow title that I actually watched and I'm quite impressed. Uh, uh, I'm a pretty big fan of the 80s and this is definitely a title that I grew up watching. Um, not the greatest film. Uh, it might be a bit under misunderstood and I think over time. Uh, people have appreciated them. Um, this is based off uh, uh, a novel series, which was called uh, The Destroyer Series, which is Rico Williams and Chun. And uh, probably, I guess, if you watch the film now, you could kind of see where it's uh, definitely some influences uh, after a success of The Karate Kid. With uh, Diane Sun and obviously Mr. Miyagi, it would have been ideal to do some sort of a, emulate that relationship between Chun and Remo. And obviously, Remo being a wisecracking guy, you kind of see some of that, uh, you know, close influence to some Billy Hill's cop and so forth. But uh, after watching the film again, I try to wa I watch every few years. Um, yeah, it has its problems, but. Uh, I think they had pretty good intentions to making this a franchise. Unfortunately, when it was released, it didn't do well at all. I think people just uh, really weren't interested. And some of that could be the films, uh, the studios called correctly, basically not enough uh, mass marketing. And also maybe the fact that the guy who plays Chun is played by a Caucasian, Joel Gray. So, but uh, beyond that, um, the film definitely has its charm. Uh, it's, it also has its reminiscence of the 80s with the very interesting uh, synth soundtrack. And uh, uh, the definitely dynamic relationship between uh, Remo and Shun. So let's look at open it up a little bit. Here's the front. Obviously, side and then the back. And with the Arrow, I guess you can compare it to Criterion. They have a ton of special features. They really go out their way. I uh, definitely uh, watched the film and its features, and it's amazing. Um, you get an audio commentary with producers Larry Spiegel and Judy Goldstein. There's a great documentary here, and I'm sure if uh, Aaron Penn's watching this, I hope you are, uh, or 4K Cinema HD. This is a great uh, documentary called Remo, Rambo, Reagan, and the Reds. The 80s action movie explosion. It's about an hour documentary and basically they break down kind of the style of the, um, action male 80s films with, and they break it down from Stallone to Schwarzenegger, you know, Dolph Lundgren. Uh, they, they discuss Charles Bronson, Chuck Norris. They even show some of the those canon films and even American Ninja, which I'm... I have a sneaky suspicion. I, I'm not confirming or denying it. I'm just based on what I saw in the documentary that was uh, produced by Arrow. Seems to me that might be a title they may release in the future. I've heard they're releasing Avenging Force. I could be wrong, but I have a sneaky suspicion that that would be a title they're going to get. But uh, also, there's a, a interview with Joel Gray, who plays Chun, and he talks about the process of how he... Um, got casted and he was reluctant at first and decided to do it anyway and also an interview with the actual composer Greg Safan who kind of reminisces about the score and why he hasn't realized why it's so popular until today so if you open this up you get a booklet here pretty cool Remo unarmed and dangerous and you get a whole bunch of uh, you know, information kind of like a criterion style. I haven't read it yet. Looks like a gem. Uh, of course, the disc really nice. 
but what's really cool is like some of the Screen Factory titles, you get reversible art. This is the original post art, it came out in 1985. So this is how it would look with the original post art. I think I might keep it like this, I kind of like the old retro feel. Yeah. I'm definitely going to keep a lookout for the soundtrack. I think it's out of print, but let's see, maybe I can find it somewhere. Who knows? But uh, as far as picture quality, um, it's not bad. Uh, I mean, considering it was made in 1985, so there's definitely some debris. Um, holds intact with the grain. Um, out of five, I guess I'll give it about a three. Um, it definitely looks a bit soft for the most part on the colors, but. Um, for the most part, I mean, this is probably the best I've ever seen the film ever look. Um, being that I've had, uh, you know, a VHS copy I recorded from, uh, the cable, from cable back in the early 90s, so. And I guess there was a DVD that's not a print. Uh, but yeah, this is probably the best it's ever looked, and, I mean, uh, this is a top quality release. I mean, even for a film like this, uh, the special features are bar none great. I've heard some of the commentary, which is pretty interesting. Um, like I said, um, it's a misunderstood film. Um, I guess its 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 strength is definitely the relationship between uh, Remo and Chun, and some of the comedic elements there. I think uh, the film probably suffers of a really could have had a little more of an interesting villain. Um, you definitely can feel some of the old James Bond vibe because he's directed by Guy Hamilton, who's directed some of the older Bond films and also was written by a Bond uh, uh, veteran as well. So it kind of has some of that feel in a sense. And you can see they definitely try to make this more of an epic film based on some of the set pieces where they actually did a set piece of the Statue of Liberty. Uh, as you can see here, and with the stunts, so definitely, um, definitely, they did, they, did, they did try their best to make this a uh, pretty decent film. And overall, I definitely recommend it if anyone has a reasonable blue player or anyone from the UK, or if you want to hunt down the DVD, good luck because that's out of print. And of course, when you go on eBay or Amazon, of course, you're gonna have your scalpers, and it's gonna go the DVD can go as slow as 20. And I've seen as high as $40. So, uh, as I end this video, I will show you the promo video that uh, Arrow has put out. And it kind of gives you more of a detail on what the film and special features will include. So, this is my unboxing of Remo Williams' The Adventure Begins on Arrow. And I'm definitely not hooked. I hope to get some more Arrow titles down the line. And this is Leroy Green. Love, peace, and hair grease. Uh, if you have any comments about the film or anything about any other future Arrow titles or anything, anything of that nature, put some uh, comments down below. In any ways, uh, peace. You've been recruited by an organization that doesn't exist. I don't want to kill you, but I will if I have to. They were actually, in real life, very gentle and, and yeah, wonderful very sweet, dogs. Yeah, really well trained. I mean, this kind of stuff is really hard. Very often, uh, you know, films uh, make it or break it by the amount of bodies that pile up. Raymond Williams had a completely different philosophy. Regarding uh, the response of the Asian community, there was a big brouhaha about my doing it. It seemed to be, after reading the script, a great challenge and a wonderful opportunity, which indeed it was. They did pay for a, a lot of music and a big orchestra, and it was a very complex score. You move like a pregnant yak.